How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making a really nice modern kind of abstract style text design. It's gonna be really fun. We're gonna deal with some lighting, some shading and some really cool stuff like that. Before we get into that, I do wanna let you guys know that my Black Friday sale, 50% off store-wide started today on Ducky3D.com. Head over to Ducky3D.com. Again, 50% off store-wide. That's the shading course, the motion graphics course, my uh, concert loops pack and the real-time materials. 50% off store-wide. Go check it out, linked in the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we are here in Blender 3.0. It's currently in beta. If you wanna grab the beta build for Blender 3.0, I will link it in the description for you to download. So first thing we're gonna do here is get a plane and I'm gonna hit S8, I'm gonna hit Enter, I'm gonna hit Control A and Apply Scale. I'm gonna hit Tab now, right click and click Subdivide. We're gonna give myself 100 subdivisions. Now. Up here on object mode, we're gonna go to weight paint. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key, I'm gonna to go to the top. And what we're gonna do is do a little a little uh, simple weight paint. So I'm gonna click on this little gradient button. I'm gonna start here, and you can kind of see the edge of our scene. So let's go to about right there. You can see kind of that very faint line because the text is gonna be right about here. Now, if you've never done this before, let me show you how this works. So we did our weight paint. Let's go and get in a new modifier, which is gonna be a displacement. And then we're gonna go and click vertex group and click group. When we did that weight paint, it automatically made a vertex group named group. You can see that. Well, I guess it's default. You wouldn't see that there. Um, oh, it's right over here. You'll see the group right there. It automatically made it and then we can apply it. So when you bring that strength up, there's that gradient. I'm gonna click new, click on this little icon here. On image or movie, we're gonna use clouds. Bring that depth down, bring the size up. Right click, shade smooth. And then you can just go ahead and bring up the strength of our displacement. And we've made our little background hills that we have in this design. I'm gonna hit shift A, and we're gonna go ahead and get text right here. So get text right here, boom. I'm gonna hit RX90. And then we're gonna go ahead and go here to the text. Right here on alignment, we're gonna make this center. And then I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. And then you hit tab. So tab allows you to type. I'm gonna go and get all caps text. I love all caps, the way that looks. And then here in geometry, we're gonna go ahead and extrude it. Just a little bit here, that's too much. Keep it rather square and then give it some depth, which gives you a nice bevel. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to font. So you can pick any font you would like. What you'll do is click this little folder icon. It'll bring you the dialog for all the fonts that are in your computer. If it doesn't do that, or you don't have any fonts in your computer, I would go to something like Google Fonts or um, Fonts 101 and download a free font. And uh, it will look like that and just go ahead and click it. I'm gonna go ahead and find a font that I like and apply it to my scene. So mine's called Techno Over here. So it's called Techno Over TTF. So if you Google that, it should bring that font up for you. I'm gonna double click it. And now we have our nice text and I'm gonna bring it forward a little bit. Now I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the front, I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a camera. Now the reason why I clicked the tilde key is because wherever you are pointed in the viewport, when you add your camera, the camera will be pointed that way. So a little tip if you don't really wanna deal with having to resize your camera right after you import it. Um, I used to have to do that every time, it was annoying. So I'm gonna hit G to kind of move it around. I'm hit G middle click to move out. In my camera settings here in that, you'll click camera, green camera. I'm gonna type in 85, I like the 85 millimeter text here. And then let's bring this up some more. All right, so it's pretty cool looking. Maybe bring my camera up like this. And then I'm gonna go here and size it down. So right now you can see the, the text is digging into the plane. I'm just gonna bring it up like that. All right, now we have this whole scene. Now I mentioned Cycles X and that's what we're gonna use now. So let's click on the camera icon. I'm gonna go Eevee to Cycles. I'm gonna click the render button just to make sure it's working. And we need to use the GPU if you have one on your laptop. There we go, we have our text. I'm gonna use Eevee to kind of preview everything. So I'm gonna hit the drop down to use scene world, scene lights. So first thing we're gonna do is go to the light and use an area light, bring it all the way up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make it a disc. 
I'm gonna go way up here. I'm gonna scale it up and I'm gonna give my power at about 800. So if we wanna see how that looks in cycles, pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shift D, scale it down and just kind of duplicate the light. I'm hitting G and then I'm gonna hit R twice to kind of re, uh, to rotate it. So now let's see how that looks in cycles here. Pretty good so far. All right, so for our world color, we're gonna click on the world and I'm gonna go in here and I copied the hex code from my original file. So the color is right about there, but you can make it any color you want your file to be. I'm gonna go ahead and repaste that. And now we have this. We do need to add one more light to our scene, which is going to be a spotlight. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get my spotlight. He's gonna be really big. I'm gonna hit S to kind of scale him down a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit G, and I want it to be near the area light because this is gonna be kind of reinforcing the light that this area light is creating, but this one is gonna be more centered on what we're doing. First thing I wanna do is here in the, uh, the cycles render, I'm gonna go here all the way down to color management. And on look, we're gonna go high contrast and on exposure, bring that exposure down. So that's gonna look really nice. So here in the spotlight, let's go ahead and give it a pretty pretty bright value here, maybe 30,000. Spotlights need to be pretty pretty bright. Now this guy is too close to the ground, so I'm gonna be something like this. Now, what I'm gonna do is spot size, I'm gonna bring it down so it's not really hitting these hills very much. I don't like that, but I still want this to be the focal point. Now that we have that, I don't like the solid edge that this is creating. So we're gonna bring that radius up. So we need to go to cycles first so we can preview the radius change and let's bring that radius up till we have a nice gradient. And then maybe on this area light here, bring it up to a thousand so that there's a bit of a difference. And so there we go we have something pretty nice so far. And then here on the background, I'm gonna go ahead and scale those hills up. And then I'm gonna go to the texture and give myself some more hills and then scale them down. That's looking a lot better. I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and bring it above that. Okay, here we go. And then we can kind of bring this down Bring my scale back up a little bit more. So let's see how that looks here in cycles. All right, pretty good. Now let's get a little bit of depth of field. Oh, here's a fun little trick. So make sure you're in your camera view. In the flat view here, we can do mat caps and stuff. Click on depth of field. And then here in the camera, we're gonna actually enable depth of field. And what we did up here was enable you to be able to see the depth of field in this sort of flat view so that you don't have to actually edit it in the cycles view, which is hard to see sometimes when you're not fully rendered. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring that f-stop down a little bit and then bring my play with my focus distance until we're fully focused on just the text. So let's go right about right about there. Okay, sometimes you can use an empty and just have that as the target object, but I just wanted to do it manually. And then here in cycles, we'll go ahead and bring that f-stop to say two. That looks pretty good. F-stop of two looks pretty nice. Now let's start shading this scene and wrapping this up. So here, we'll actually go here to the shading tab. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view bring this in here. I'm going to click scene world scene lights just like this. So we're going to shade the mountains first. So I'm going to get a shift a search, get a color ramp, and then I'm going to get a noise texture. Now with the node wrangler add on enabled, you'll hit control T and you'll get a mapping node and a texture coordinate. And we're going to use the object coordinate here. And let's plug the noise texture here and the color ramp into the roughness. So let's play with that. You can start seeing it manipulating here. So let's go ahead and bring that scale up. And then you can bring this here, bring that detail up, bring that roughness pretty high up. And then here in cycles, we'll preview it. Normally when I'm working, I preview things in cycles pretty heavily, but the problem is 
my recording software will lag and you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing. Let's bring this black portion here to the gray. Now we have a nice rough floor. Now let's get a bump node. B-U-M, bump node. Plug that there. Let's get a uh, another color ramp. C-O-L, shift A, search. Color ramp, plug the color to the height. Factor into the color ramp. So everything's gonna bump up now. Okay, and then we're gonna bring this down like that, and then bring that strength significantly down. All right, let's see how this looks. Pretty good floor, it's looking really, really nice. I do wanna bring that um, color management and bring that exposure down some more. And then here in the spotlight, get that power to be 35. Thousand. It's looking pretty good now. Even maybe our world brightness can come up a little bit. All right. So this is how we're looking here in cycles. Let's go ahead and shade this text. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and get that new material we just made, and I'm gonna click the two. What that did was make a new um, duplicate, and then we can kind of play with our. Uh, bump here on the color ramp. Let's make a gradient. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just duplicate this color ramp. So here in the world brightness, whatever your color is in the sky, we're gonna copy that hex code so you can have some something uh, working together in your scene. Makes everything nice and cohesive. And I'm gonna paste that into the hex of the color ramp and keep this white. So let's crunch in these two so we can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a gradient node. So gradient texture, I'm gonna hit Control T, I'm gonna hit G to move it up. Let's use the object coordinate. We get it, We got a new mapping set up so we can manipulate the texture, uh, the gradient texture. So now I'm gonna go ahead and darken this kind of olive color. And then I'm on the Z, I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z. And then here on the X axis of the location, I'm gonna move my texture up. And so what this does is it kind of makes it kind of cohesive to the ground. So it looks like the texts actually have some, some form of relation to the ground. And if we look at the render here, it looks pretty nice. Maybe there's too much white here. So let's go ahead and maybe bring this back. So there's a smoother gradient. There we go, that's a lot better. And maybe we can bring this text a little bit darker. There we go, it looks great. And it looks like we are done with our scene. This is it, we're done, it's pretty cool. Now, if you wanna animate it, it's tough to, text is tough to animate here in um, Blender, unless you're doing say, maybe like some camera motions like that. Uh, what I did when I wanted to animate it was I just kind of rotated the text because it looks kind of cool when you rotate it like that. So you can see here in Eevee, do some rotations because it interacts with the light in actually a very nice organic kind of natural way. So that's how you can kind of animate it. But that is the scene. Thank you guys for watching. Again, Black Friday sale, 50% off, store-wide at ducky3d.com. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.